What's going on in the big old world today, people? I'm going to bring you the latest and greatest like I always do. And welcome to the Jamie Hicks Show. And today on the Chopping Block, we got none other than the City Council meeting from 7-8-2024, which would have been a week ago. And we have public comment section. And you're going to see a tyrant mayor who just can't keep his mouth shut. Now, mind you, there's 47 seconds of my wife's comments cut out of her public comment section. Not only that, Mayor Grove took half of her five-minute speaking time, which he said he would not do. Now, is this the man you want to trust? Is this the man you trust for your safety? Whatever. The, I don't know. Let's get into it. Again, uh, out of respect for your folks and your time, I'm to make sure I'm not going to respond to anything at this time. Uh, as far as the council members, that's their call, how they want to handle it. Uh, please, we come to the microphone if you give your name and let us know for the record. And then thank you. Hello, my name is Mary Hales, and I live here in Lusville. Uh, I don't know if any of you have been out to the drop-off point, but I was there at 3 o'clock today. You get a chance to go on out there. It's sort of an obstacle course, and it looks like hell. There's like two big burn piles. It's, you go around in a little figure eight to drop your stuff off, and you hope nobody has to drop off behind you. But I just thought I'd bring it to your attention. Somebody needs to uh, clean it up. I've never seen it look that bad out there. So that's all I have to say. Uh, hi, I'm Brianne Hicks. Um, again, I'm going to bring up some issues that we've already talked about that I may have not gotten a response to or has still not been addressed, so if we could get an update on it if it is in process. Um, one, the alternate email. I know we kind of discussed before that we can't get the email to go through on the websites. Is there any updates on that? I'll let you have your public comment. And okay. Thanks. Yep. <laughs> um, again, I would like, to, as the public, um, to get a hold of the packet so that we have the information that we can discuss with you guys here. I feel like that is the whole point of the public being at the meetings for the otherwise we're, we're not commenting on anything we're not having a discussion so it's kind of even pointless to have the meetings if we're not allowed to discuss anything of what's being what's going on currently um matheson park um i know there was discussion of trees and things being added there as well as it being cleaned up a little bit any updates on that at all uh, the yard waste burn pile i did bring up at the last meeting possibly an alternative that would be better for our residents as well as the environment if we could compost it and sell it. Um, I have not gotten a response on that at all. So, oh, and, and the fire hydrants and the curbs being painted, the fire uh, in front of the fire hydrants, the curbs being painted as well. So that's all I got, thanks. Dawn Hicks. So um, I see on the agenda tonight that there's supposed to be um, a request from Hegler Karras Foundation for two designated parking spaces for the Hegler Karras Mansion. Is that the um, handicap spots that have already been put in and done? Because I'm trying to understand why we're voting on something that's already happened. Um, don't know if you're aware, but the handicap ramp outside here is completely blocked. Uh, I feel like there could have been a better spot for the equipment. So once again, handicapped people, anybody who's having mobility issues will not be able to access the city building. And um, Jordan, just to let you know, um, the building permit at the Maytag has not been there. It was there when once you said something, but prior to that, it was not there. I went through multiple photos, not just from me, but from businesses downtown that have pictures of that building, and there's no building permit whatsoever. 
So I don't understand building inspector why we don't have building permits on the Maytag building when they're supposed to up until very recently. So maybe something to address. Hello, um, Dina Hicks. I live in this cell. Um, the air monitor. I know this was brought up a million bazillion jillion times, but the last time it was brought up, um, Alderman Thompson had said he wanted to have a discussion as well about why it goes off all the time, um, pretty much at night, pretty much all the time. If it doesn't go off in the night, we're surprised. Um, it's always way higher of a reading when it is on than the library as well. Um, so there's that. And then also um, I want to talk about possibly getting a packet as well, especially in regards to large purchases, that we could look over the different um, options for, say, the street sweeper specifically. It is a very large um, purchase. How much does it cost to outfit an officer that's been hired? with whatever it is that they need. There's got to be a price in regards to that specific hire. So are we changing anything? Are we looking at why we lose officers and need to rehire all the time? Um, it's just something that if you're not already looking into, I would like some maybe some information as to why not. How many officers did we lose due to retirement and how many left? If you're going to say that, I just want to know. Are you asking me? You, you said we're looking at, I want to know what you're basing your question on. Because in the agendas, you say, oh, well, we're looking to hire three more officers. A few months ago, you guys discussed hiring four officers. So as part of management, your past management experience, what causes that usually? Oh, as to why? Well, uh, in the last maybe five, six years, it's been more people specific. You know, you hire people, they're not as accountable as they used to be. Um, in your in your line of work, you're seeing that? Oh, yes. Okay. And probably every line so of why, work. So why, why, us specifically, what, from the information you have, so you said we should look into it, What why, why are we replacing our officers right now? I don't know. That's what okay. I'd like to well, know. Well, that's probably, probably, we should find out before you bring it up, uh, retirements. Okay. Well, that's, a majority good, of ours. that's a good answer. But in my experience, when you go to school to become a professional of sorts, i.e. a nurse, why would you go through all that training and all that expense to just hop around? I'm not a hop arounder. I, I believe when you apply for a position, if you are a professional, you, you work. And just so you know, as far as there is definitely a cost, and you know that since you're in management, I mean, when you take the time, when you have time cost. to interview somebody, it's your time that your company or whatever is paying for you to, to do that. Uh, we do have in our contract, a union contract, that if somebody leaves after they have the training at our accountability, at our academy, so they have to prorate back the money we put up for it up front for that money. Very good. So, so there is some, See, there those are some, the things those are some like fixes. That's very there. nice. Um, and then I had a question about home rule, because we're a home rule from what I understand. Does that mean that you guys don't open bids? Is that why that doesn't happen? Like when you put something out for bid and you used to back in the day open bids at the council meeting, is that why that doesn't happen anymore because of the home rule? We, we have a bid opening. You see it's set for a certain date. So maybe we will say there was one July 3rd. So we have it here. It's it's open to the public. It's announced. People can come in and, and do that. Brian Brown is one usually on that situation opens those bids up, and usually you have the representatives who turn in the bid. So Jeff Grove Construction put in a bid, or you know, Dina Hicks Construction put in a bid. Usually those people are in, in attendance, and they actually get to see right there the bids get open, and it's it's transparent as can be for it. Where, where is this huh? posted? Call the letting. Call the letting. Where is this posted? Paper. In the newspaper. 
And I would suggest too that I think the packets is something that's brought up, but you know, the goal is when we post that meeting is that's your time to look at it. And that's your time, as you mentioned, to give input to your alderman. Say, hey, you know, Alderman Reynolds, I see there is a street sweeper up for thing. Can I see your packet? Can I see your 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 bids? And that also gets communication open. We're we're probably not going to go out and give out bids because I could give out to four thousand different households the the notes every meeting. But that's why we post the meeting notes so you could take an active role in government and contact your representative and say, hey, do you have more information on this? Great. Let's can I look at it over the weekend with you sometime? Sure, or before Monday night. And that's what the process is. That's why we have the meeting notes. <laughs> We're, we're past the five minute mark, Mayor. Hmm? We're past the five minute mark. Okay. I, I added some time. That's true. Yeah. Right. Dina, are you comfortable with? Did you, did you get everything in? Yeah, I, more else. Because yeah. I, 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 I talked. Okay. I want to make sure you had that opportunity. Thank you. You ready, Brent? Yep. Well, here we are again, boys. Chief, it's nice to see you with your head down, not listening like always. At the end of the last meeting, I asked Mayor Grove a specific question about the new safety updates at Rotary Park. During his smug response, he told me I was simply seeking affirmation. Oh, that's odd. Back in March, I took photos and wrote a detailed message to ensure that Mayor Grove was aware of the serious damage at the park dangers at the park. I sent these to him and never received a response. Nothing at all. I attempted to handle it out of this room, but this sexist, hateful man forced me to come here on April Fool's Day. I have to say, Jeff, it's like you were the holiday mascot. Do you remember the audience walking out after your rampage? On that day, I got up here to stand up for the kids, parents, and those with disabilities. I asked the mayor if he had contacted anyone to address the park issue. I gave him my remaining time to respond. He had 38 seconds and said nothing. Is that the type of man you really want as your mayor come the next election? Do you guys remember the way he treated the woman who spoke up here and openly stated that she had autism? He barked at her and she's never spoken again. I wonder if she realizes that Grove already looked down at her because she was born with a vagina. About two weeks after I spoke here on April 1st, there was orange fencing added at the park as a temporary fix. Since then, I have occasionally inquired about the status of the safety changes, yet Grove insists that this mother's only care is for attention, affirmation, and views. It sure can't be because I give a damn about the people, right, Jeff? Remember when you lied to the softball guys here claiming you took Rotary Park seriously right away? The hell you did, Jeffrey. Moving on. I paid a visit to the park this weekend to view the current updates. We brought Nina's tacos, played, and enjoyed the new decks that are placed where the death traps once were. I want to thank those of you who played a role in making the park safer for everyone. Mr. McFedrin, I appreciated you letting me know that the two-inch obstacle will, will also be taken care of. The shaded deck was a great idea, and so was the placement of the tables up there. I found myself really excited about these new changes. In fact, a Facebook memory popped up as I sat there yesterday. It was from my sister Kim who passed away two years ago and had lifelong special needs. Kimmy and I were incredibly close and I found it amazing that I was there as her message came up. It said, you're the only one there for me and I thank you for that. You are my rock. You see, I get up here and out there and share bits of me, my experiences, and I learn, and most importantly, I speak up for others who can't. Grove, you claimed you respected my activism, but that's false. How many times have you questioned my integrity, my motives for your own benefit? You have made personal attacks against me. You even suggested that our kids may cross paths and reference my public comments. Our kids go to school with others whose parents have long rap sheets, issues with drug abuse, the list goes on. And you're suggesting that there may be an issue for my girls because you think yours should have a problem with me standing up here? That says more about you than I ever could. 
I don't need a thank you or affirmation from someone like you. I deserve an apology. For the remainder of my time, I will be holding a moment of silence to remember my dear Kimberly J. Paff and anyone else lost too soon. Well, there you have it. That's the public comment for the 7-8-2024 city meeting. Once again, we see the mayor. He can't seem to keep his mouth closed, even though he claims he's going to. Um, he does not like when women question him or anybody for that matter. But if you're a woman, oh boy, um, he is going to do what he can to make you feel like a piece of shit to never come back to a meeting. He's done it before. If you listen to the women that are standing up for the whole town of LaSalle while the men are sitting on their asses and letting them handle it, there's issues going on in this town, and we need to make change. And the change starts with you people. You have to vote. You have to vote the right people in and get the wrong people out. So, I appreciate every single one of you. Please like and subscribe on whatever platform I am on. And please make sure to check out other platforms because I am going many places, people. Thank you, The Jamie Hicks Show.